Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh teman-teman semuanya Selamat datang di Jembatan Dakwah Dan kali ini ada seseorang yang bertanya Ya dia bertanya tentang kegelias, kegelisahannya Dan dia mengatakan sendiri bahwa ini adalah pertanyaan terbesarnya selama ini Hmm ya ini pertanyaan terbesarnya Lalu apa pertanyaannya dan bagaimana jawaban dari Muhammad Ali Simak video ini selengkapnya hingga akhir Agar kalian tidak salah paham Selamat menonton dan semoga bermanfaat Mari kita Hi, thank you for uh, allowing me to enter. No problem. Um, okay, so are a... you... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I had a question. Um, I've been trying to, you know, look into Islam. Mm-hmm. Um, so far, I do like, <clears throat> you know, what I what I read and what I... Um, what I'm learning mm-hmm. um, but I'm a Christian mm-hmm. and I do have some questions mm-hmm. um, I guess one of my biggest questions right now is I'm the type of Christian who worships on Sabbath or Saturday and I was wondering um, why that's not really part of the Muslim faith you mean the Sabbath why is the Sabbath not a part of Islam, the Islamic religion is that what you say yes yeah uh, it's not a part of the Christian religion really as well um, I guess uh, do, well, do, do, hmm. yeah do, do churches or Christians of today, the majority, over 90% of them, not work and rest on the on, on Saturday. Yeah, or they, majority or they, don't. Yeah, or they, they have a day of worship is Sunday, which the church have actually, you know, innovated. This idea mm-hmm. of Sunday being the day of worship, because it's, there's nothing in the Bible that says that, that you have to worship on, on Sunday. But this is what the church, the tradition of the church, this is what has become predominant for Christians. So Christians don't really keep the, uh, the Sabbath. So even if you want to come from a Christian point of view, because Christians, they claim... And something called progressive revelation. We believe in something called progressive revelation as well. You know what progressive revelation is? No. That revelation, uh, the, the commands of God changes with time based on the needs of the people. So uh, the teachings of Noah were not the same as the teachings of Moses. The teachings of Moses are not the same as the teachings of Jesus. The teachings mm-hmm. of Jesus are not the same as the teachings of Prophet Muhammad. So Allah Azza wa affirms that there is something called Sabbath. Mm-hmm. Allah affirms that in the Quran. And, and he says that the children of Israel have transgressed in the Sabbath because this is what ladina a'tada fi sabt. That they worked, they were working in the Sabbath, even though they were not supposed to work on the Sabbath. But they were trying to play games with God, you know. They put the nest, the net, the net Friday night, you know. Yeah. And then the fish go in the net on Saturday, and they stay home. They don't know anything on Sunday. They take, they collect the fish, you know. So they they playing games with God, like you know what we didn't really, uh, we didn't do fishing on on Saturday because God was testing them. God was bringing the the fish, a lot of fish on Saturday to test them, you know. And other days of the week, there were not as, mu- as much fish or as many fish. So what happens is that they were always seeing fish on Saturday. And they know, you know what, Saturday cannot work. That's the test. So what they used to do, they're trying to trick God. So you know what, Friday night we're going to put. But Allah Azza affirms it's something called the Sabbath. And that he says that it was made upon those who transgressed on it. So it's not an obligation for everyone. It was, a, it was an obligation for the children of Israel in that time. And it is certainly not for God resting on the seventh day. We don't believe that. God does not rest. He does not need energy. He does not need refreshment, you know. As human beings, if God needed the rest, He wouldn't be gone. Okay. So, yeah, so from an Islam perspective, is what I'm telling you is that we believe, you know, the teachings of all prophets is the same, meaning that they tell you to worship on God mm-hmm. and to follow the messenger of your time. But those messengers bring different laws okay. for the people based on, on the time, based on the needs of those people, based on the wisdom of God. Because people at different times do not necessarily require the exact same commands to do. And they don't all behave the same way. So Allah says in the Quran, children of Israel have transgressed a lot. And the Bible mentions the same thing. They disobey God, you know, mm-hmm. you know, show them so many signs. So God made things difficult for them by increasing the commands on them because they, they were a transgression nation. So the, the result was that God was increasing them in commands. But those commands, Muslims are not obliged to follow because this is not the same nation. We did not do these things. You know? Okay, okay, I kind of understand that. Um, is it okay if I ask another question? Yeah, yeah, of course. You can ask all the questions. Yeah, no problem. I guess one thing that sometimes like trips me up about mm-hmm. like with my religion, something that I'm trying to like let go of, is they have this thing in my religion called like the sanctuary service. It's mm-hmm. what we use to believe that Jesus died for us. Like um, back in you know in the times of um, like in the Old Testament when people were still. Um, killing goats and sometimes doves um, and lambs mm-hmm. they would say that that those things were to point us to to jesus mm-hmm. so i am of the belief now that you know that he that there is no trinity from what i've been learning but sometimes when i hear this it still you know confuses me well if you really read the bible then you realize that this was not the case you know because there's multiple passages in the bible 
that they do not talk about sacrifice as a need for forgiveness. They just say you have to repent and come back to the Creator and God will forgive you. Like Ezekiel chapter 18, for example. If you mm -hmm. go to Ezekiel chapter 18, the whole chapter is about a story of God forgiving people when they return to Him, you know? The whole chapter mm -hmm. is about this idea without any sacrifices, okay? So mm -hmm. it says that that uh, the, the father shall not bear the iniquity of the son and the son shall not bear the, the iniquity of the father. And then it says if he turns back and repents, he surely yeah. shall, shall live, meaning he will be forgiven. He will live. He's not going to have the eternal death. He's going to have life. If he forget, if he comes back and repents to God. Also, you've got this idea that, that there are people. So first is an instance here of forgiveness without any blood. Only Paul told the people that you need blood. Secondly, you have people who didn't use blood and they were forgiven. They were uh, donating. If you go to Leviticus, you know, they mm -hmm. were donating flour. And donating different yeah, other things. And this is not, that's not human sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Also, the, the third thing is that the, the Bible itself has condemned human sacrifice. Where mm -hmm. does God ever command human sacrifice? There's a large difference between animal sacrifice and human sacrifice. Because Muslims even sacrifice uh, animals, if you know, obviously, in Eid. You probably Eid, see yeah. this. Mm -hmm. In Eid time, Muslims sacrifice. We don't have a problem with the idea of sacrificing. If mm -hmm. it's for God, uh, if it's specifically for God. And also for the tradition of Abraham, that God, when God was testing Abraham with his son, then he sent down his friend to be, to be slaughtered. So it's also a revival of that tradition. And because we uh, give charity the meat that we have in uh, in Eitan, because it's a time of celebration and poor people do not have anything. Mm -hmm. So when you slaughter, you give, it, you give it out to the poor people. So uh, slaughtering an animal for God, it, no Muslim will tell you this, this concept itself is problematic. No one says that. Okay. But now when you come and say it's a human sacrifice, a human being who didn't do anything wrong, According to the Bible, he was innocent, unblemished, mm -hmm. pure, all, all of these different terms that Christians use. So if he was like this, how comes you're coming and telling us God have, have killed that, that pure person for the things that or the wrongs that me and you are doing? And he has nothing to do with them. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so so this is what Muslims say. Muslims say, look, God is a forgiving God. Does, mm -hmm. does God need to kill anyone to forgive you? No, okay, not really so, say it like that, yeah. Yeah, so if he doesn't need to do that, then why would he do that to an innocent person who didn't do anything wrong, mm -hmm. who didn't want to die? Yeah. Because he was saying in the Bible, what? take this cup away from me. And mm -hmm. the cup is a, is a crucifixion. And he says, why have you forsaken me? When he was on uh, alleged cross, we don't believe that, but this is what Christians believe. So if he didn't want to die and he was pure, then how comes would God kill an innocent, pure person? To forgive you while he can just forgive you if he wanted to forgive you. Also, when you go back to the Old Testament, can you bring me those prophets that are saying you cannot be forgiven without blood? Did any, does, does any of the prophets who are teaching their people this, this idea and that there is someone who's going to come in the future, take all of your sins away through being the, uh, killed as a human sacrifice? You're not going to find that. You're only yeah. going to find the opposite, mm -hmm. which is God warning from human sacrifice. Yeah. And then when you were speaking, it reminded me, I don't know where it is in the Bible. But one part where they mention like that God prefers obedience rather than sacrifice, because sometimes um, they would, you know, they would do the whole animal sacrifice, but then still mm -hmm. go and do whatever they wanted. Absolutely. But, you know, God would prefer that we would obey him than to do that. Um, you know, so. you make an excellent point, actually, because isn't that what Christians are doing today? Jesus mm -hmm. died for our sins, many Christians. Mm -hmm. Jesus died for our sins, so we do whatever we want to do, isn't it? Like yeah. theoretically, theoretically, if I claim that Jesus died for my sins and I believe that, where is the problem in me committing sins? That's true. I mean, in my religion, I like in my, I guess, sect of Christianity, mm -hmm. we believe that it's important to have the works along with mm -hmm. the faith. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why we still like worship on the Sabbath and we don't eat pork and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, then, so I have had a lot of Christians, you know, they get upset when I say that I do that, you know, they say, well, yes. Jesus canceled those things out. Um, that's but, the teachings of Paul, not Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus yeah, taught the opposite. And many, many times I've mentioned this, that, that Jesus taught, if you open Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, 18, and, uh, 19, and 20, all of them are saying the same thing. They're saying that he said that wh whoever breaks a dot of the law, he shall be called the least, least in the kingdom of heaven. And unless you do this, these deeds, you're not going to enter the kingdom of heaven. You have to exceed the, the, the Pharisees and the scribes mm -hmm. who were uh, pretending to be righteous people. Yes. But, but in reality, they don't have the faith. So one, one thing is missing. They don't have humbleness. They don't have these things. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, and, and it's, it's clear in the Bible for anyone who actually wants to see that, that, that this idea that sacrifice is not a needed thing. And, uh, and works are important because there's no point of God commanding people throughout human history to do works if works are not needed. And that's why when, when you encounter Christians with this idea and you tell them, you know what, okay, you can do whatever you want. And Jesus says, has that for instance. They say, no, once you accept Jesus, you'll be a good person. But that's not what we see, you know. Humans mm -hmm. are fallible, and whatever you accept, you still commit sins. And mm -hmm. when I ask them, do you commit sins? They say, yes. Okay, so what, what, what's the point you're making? If you accept Jesus, you become perfect. Then show me who's these perfect people who don't commit any sins. If you continue to commit sins, then what's the point of Jesus dying for you then? That's true. So it's just a contradictory concept. But when you say these things that you're saying, exactly right. You say the Christians are not going to like you. Of course, they're not going to like you, you know? 
Because you're like, you're teaching them more of Islam now. You're not teaching them Christianity. And, and they're trying to make it as if it's different. As if like, you know what? Like Christians are very different from Muslims. You guys rely on works. That's why they always try to say, you know? Mm -hmm. While we just have the faith of Jesus Christ and all of this stuff that they say. While in reality, Muslims say, I, I told, uh, I mentioned this multiple times. The Prophet ﷺ, he said that no one enters paradise with his deeds. We enter through the mercy of God. It's not the deeds that we do that, that leads Muslims into paradise. We reject this idea, but we still, mm -hmm. we say deeds are important. Okay. Right? These are mm -hmm. important that these are necessary. So what you believe is like essentially what Muslims believe, you know, you're very close to the Islamic belief. What's the difference between you and the Muslim belief, basically, other than believing in Prophet Muhammad and his revelation? What is the difference, really? Um, the difference is that we still do believe in Jesus and his sacrifice. And then um, do you do you know that Muslims believe in Jesus or no? I did learn that recently because I have a co-worker who's Muslim and he told me that. So that's um, not a difference. Because he is mentioned 25 uh, times by name in the Quran. And mm. there's a whole chapter by his mother, chapter 19, that has the story mm -hmm. of his birth. Yes. So, and there's many miracles that are mentioned in the Quran that are unique to the Quran. They're not even in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And many of the, the miracles in the Bible are affirmed in the Quran. So, to say that, you know what, Muslims don't believe in Jesus. Of course, anyone who reads the Quran will, will realize that. So, that's not a disagreement now. The idea of sacrifice, I was just talking to you about it. We're just discussing it right now. How it does not make any sense? This idea to claim that God unjustly kills someone in order for uh, for you to be forgiven. And you are not responsible for anything that you do. Yeah. And you are mm -hmm. saying that deeds are important, so you have to do good. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so there's no difference between that and Islam then? That is true, I guess. What else? What is the difference? Eh? Tell me. Um, do you know what you believe and what Muslim believes? Essentially. We have like this belief called mm -hmm. like the Great Controversy, mm -hmm. where... They say that um, instead of, you know, Satan being a, a jinn, that he was, that he's an angel and um, he was jealous of Jesus and decided to like, because he was fighting in heaven with the other angels and they were fighting and then he lost and was sent down to earth and then that's, that's when, when he started, started um, Adam and Eve. Does, Does that, that make, make sense, sense to you? Dan itulah jawaban dari Muhammad Ali part satunya ya teman-teman nah, Part duanya nanti ya habis duhur insya Allah Dan di sini kita bisa lihat bahwa sepertinya wanita ini tuh udah sedikit bingung dan ingin mengetahui lebih lanjut tentang agamanya Tapi dia bertanya bukan kepada uh, pemuka agamanya tapi dia lebih milih bertanya kepada Muhammad Ali. Admin tidak tahu apa yang terjadi di sana. Admin tidak tahu mengapa ia tidak mau bertanya kepada pemuka agamanya, tapi lebih memilih bertanya kepada Muhammad Ali. Tapi yang pasti, yang pasti, um, sepertinya dia sudah mulai mendapatkan sedikit jawaban dari pertanyaan terbesarnya tersebut. Dan simak part 2 nya nanti insya Allah habis zuhur Terima kasih telah menonton video ini hingga akhir Sampai jumpa pada video dakwah berikutnya Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh